Uh, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for being here. Uh, from the outset, what I would like to say is that um, it's important to realise at this time we have a significant investigation un under uh, underway. Uh, we are examining a number of crime scenes. There are many things that we still don't know about what occurred in the early hours of this morning, and obviously there will be some things that we do know about that we can't discuss here because they will be subject of evidentiary matters before the court. What I can tell you is that about 1.17 this morning, an armed robbery took place at the Parkwood Tavern in Napa Road at Arundel. Uh, shortly thereafter, we received a triple O call. Uh, a, a significant number of police units uh, proceeded towards the, uh, the armed robbery site. Um, what we had learnt initially was that two males, one armed with machete and one armed with a firearm, had committed an armed robbery at that location and had fled the scene. Uh, police in attendance then set about tracking uh, and setting up cordons in an endeavour to locate uh, the offending uh, people. Uh, these people were subsequently tracked uh, by a police dog to a location in Napa Road. Uh, that area is an area of, um, it's a residential area and the particular uh, place that we're speaking about uh, is situated on, on acreage. Uh, what I can tell you is that the uh, police dog was able to track the two offenders beside a garden shed. Uh, the dog squad handler, Sergeant Hamray, um, as he got to the edge of the garden shed, uh, was shot without warning and had suffered a single gunshot wound to the face. Uh, he at that time was accompanied by an officer from Runaway Bay. Um, both uh, Sergeant Hamray, and despite the fact that he'd been wounded, was able to regain his composure and he and the other officer both returned fire on the males that was accreted around the side of the garden shed. Uh, both of those male persons uh, received gunshot wounds. Uh, one was immediately detained at the scene. Uh, the second made his escape down a side yard and he was later detained by police who had set up a cordon in that street. Early this morning I spoke to Sergeant Hamray at the hospital uh, he is in good spirits, he is an extremely brave officer and he should be commended for his duty. Um, he is a very lucky man and the events of last night simply highlight the dangers that operational police face on a, on a, a daily basis. Uh, later this morning uh, we anticipate that he may undergo some surgical procedure to clean the, work, clean the wound. Uh, both of the other men are at the hospital as well and they too will require to undergo surgical procedures as a result of the gunshot wounds they received. Um, I might just start out the questions at, at this stage. Graham, it sounds like there was no warning here for this officer as they walked around. No, uh, that's certainly right. Uh, when I spoke to the sergeant, and I have to be mindful of what I say here because these are matters for the court, uh, we all allege obviously that he was shot without warning. Would you call it an ambush? Uh, no, I think, I don't know if that was an ambush, and I, and I can't say that, but what it was was a confrontation, and the position that the offending people were in, uh, it was they were boxed into a corner and confronted by a police dog handler and his dog, doing their job. How would you describe the way that they retaliated? You know, there's, there's, there's two police there, and, and then they just, without any warning, fired back, I mean, it's pretty, pretty cowardly. Certainly. Um, you'd have to say that this is a very cowardly act. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that what is most appropriate in this instance is to look at the response of the police officers. Uh, their training held them in good stead. Uh, so despite the fact that Sergeant Henry had been uh, significantly injured, he was able to regain his composure and do his job, and then assisted even further beyond that. How could they do back up around? Uh, it was there. We had set, had set up a cordon around the entire block, so there were police right around the block, and that's what led to the second person being captured as he made his escape. Um, is it, can you confirm reports that at least one of the officers who responded to the scene also had responded to the government leaving the scene uh, Look, I can't confirm that, but I'm led to believe that there was at least one officer who was at this scene who was possibly at the Damon leading man. Can you tell us whereabouts on his face he was injured? Uh, just below his left cheekbone. How close was he when he was shot to? Uh, it's difficult to say, but my estimation would be... It, I don't know exactly where, where the sergeant was standing, but I'd probably suggest it was probably a matter of feet. 
The shed that they were hiding next to, is that in a house yard? Is there any connection to that house? No, no. It, it is in a house yard and it's just your typical garden shed. During that initial robbery, are there any... Um, we've just heard some conflicting reports that hostages may have been taken as part of that initial robbery at the tavern. Look, I don't really want to comment on that. Obviously, there were staff employed at the hotel who were going through their closing procedures and they were subject to the armed robbery. No patrons at all inside at the top? Not that I know of, no. So uh, these people had completed the armed robbery and were caught as they were leaving? Um, no, they had uh, fled some distance from the scene of the armed robbery. Um, how that came about and how they actually came to be where they were located, we're not sure at this stage. It's far too early for us to say. Graham, can you tell us about the weapon that was fired at the officer? It was a small calibre rifle. How much time passed between when they were found and the robbery? Um, it was about an hour and three quarters, I'd suggest. Um, from the time we got the triple O call to the time we had the call of shots fired, uh, it was about three quarters of an hour. I know, um, the, you know the union was saying, and you probably had this thought as well, that when, when, when you heard the news of this, what went through your head, not again kind of thing? Like uh, to be honest with you, my heart sank. Uh, to think that um, here we are on Police Remembrance Day and here's another police officer going about the course of his duties who has suffered a gunshot wound at the hands of the criminals. Do you have any messages to police officers at the moment who might be feeling a bit distraught by what they've seen today? Yeah, I do have a message really. Uh, be proud of who you are, be proud of the uniform that you wear and be proud of the job that you do. And I think a large proportion of the thinking public largely support the work that the police do. You mentioned that um, this officer is a very brave man. In fact, his bravery has been commended in the past, hasn't it? Uh, look, I'm not sure about that. Um, but certainly the police officer's concern is a, I'll, I'll use the word veteran, he's a very experienced police officer. Um, he for many years has, has worked alone with his dog and that in itself requires a significant amount of courage. And if you were to see the scene there this morning in complete darkness and the fact that he led the way with his dog without regard to his personal safety, you would have to say that he's a very brave officer. Are you able to share any details on his family and the dog's name? I don't know his dog's name. I obviously saw the dog this morning. Um, uh, the sergeant has a son in the job. He's a police officer at Goodna. I spoke to his son this morning. Uh, he drove down from Goodna. Um, so he also has a brother in the job. Uh, it is a police family, and that really struck home this morning. When you see two brothers and a son there uh, after one officer has been shot, it's a very poignant reminder of how strong our police family is. Right. He came around and, and obviously he been shot, was there an exchange of gunfire between sort of the, the th four parties I guess then backwards and forth? Um, obviously what I can tell you without going into all the detail is is that um, the sergeant immediately realised he had been shot, uh, he, had a, he had an officer behind him, <coughs> um, it was evident to both that a shot had been fired and as per the training they undertook they returned fire to protect themselves. Were they fired on again after that? No. The, um, one of the, you said one of the suspects ran into a house and there were people inside that home as well? I understand that there were, that there were people living in that house, yeah. Did they go inside the house or into, no, the, into the yard? Was there any concern for public safety at any stage to do this? Uh, no, there wasn't, but you'd have to think at any time that when a weapon is discharged in that public place, we would hold some concern for general safety of people. Uh, thankfully, it was in the early hours of the morning. Thankfully, it was in a confined space and that uh, I think the situational awareness of the uh, officers at the time was able to prevent uh, any further activity taking place. Right. Right. In, that, sorry, in that moment, for those people that have never experienced that sort of scene, uh, um, give us a snapshot of what would have been going through those police officers' mind. Like, would they would have been sheer terror? Would have been, uh, I don't know, how you've just been, a uh, blast has gone off in front of your face. Give us a, an idea of what's going on. It's difficult to say what went through those officers' minds, but you'd have to think about um, uh, disbelief, uh, shock, um, and obviously what happened on this occasion, these two officers trained kicked in the gear, and kicked in the gear very, very quickly. And I'd suggest that their response and the outcome uh, is indicative of what went through their minds. But certainly what I would say to you was their personal safety was not at the forefront. They put the safety of the public first. Does the fact that the officer was shot in the face and yet 
but the return fire injured the two men not fatally. Does that represent a significant presence of mind of those officers? Uh, no, look, that's the way it unfolded. Um, you have to appreciate this is this is almost pitch black. Uh, the only lighting that was available was that that was about uh, either through street lighting or otherwise. Uh, when I was there early this morning, um, you could not see unless you had the car lights, the car lights turned on. So it was a very dark environment. Uh, there is a lot of um, trees and shrubbery in the area. Uh, as I say, and this is at um, uh, about uh, three o'clock this morning. So you can imagine what it was like. With the sergeant's injuries, are you expecting him to be in hospital for some time or could he be released? Uh, it's difficult to say. Um, my information just recently is that there is further examination to be undertaken. Uh, the initial assessment is that his wounds are, uh, are not significant and that's an unusual thing to say, but um, he has been a very, very lucky man and it appears that the, uh, the bullet has not... Um, uh, cause any major structural damage to his face. Um, so um, there will be further procedures and I think there are a number of doctors who are going to look at the site this morning. An assessment will be made. Uh, it's probably going to be the case that he will be taken to theatre later this morning and have the wound cleansed and uh, a further assessment of the nature of the injury will take place. So did the, did the bullet actually penetrate or did it graze? Penetrated. Did it shatter his jaw? Does he have any no, it doesn't appear to this stage to be any structural damage to the officer's face. Yeah, the bullet's still lodged. No, the bullet exited it. Did it damage his... Is there any indication of his hearing? Uh, uh, not at this stage. Um, we understand that he has some compression-type uh, injury within his eardrum. <coughs> uh, the bullet passed very close to his eardrum. Uh, I'm not a medical person, but that's my understanding of it. Do we know where the bullets hit the two robbers? Really? Uh, what I can tell you is that both men uh, were struck uh, in the legs and feet. You're expecting charges to be laid against them today? We would hope so. It depends. Both of those men will be required to undergo surgery today. Uh, they will remain under guard and they will face um, uh, some very serious charges once we're able to do so. And so both of the men sustained only one bullet wound each? Uh, one suffered multiple injuries. One suffered a single injury. And in mm. terms of who and the sergeant who he shot, did he someone multiple times or just the ones? Look, they are still matters for the investigation. Um, what you have to appreciate is the speed at which this, this incident occurred, uh, the location in which it occurred, the time that it occurred and the fact that one of these officers has been shot. Um, it's very difficult and that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to work out we have four crime scenes uh, that we're trying to analyse and there's a lot of material. We simply just don't know and I'm being quite honest with you about that. Well, Gary, you what's up? What's the wounds to the two alleged offenders? Significant, significant, but not life-threatening. Was there anything taken from the tavern, and was that collected? Was that at the scene? Uh, a sum of cash was stolen, plus some personal items of property whenever from some of the employees. Whenever something like this happens, obviously people say, you know, gun crime is out of control on the Gold Coast. Would you do you think gun crime is out of control on the Gold Coast? No, certainly not. Um, it's evident that we have gun crime here. There's gun crime in most places. Uh, not only in Queensland, but within all jurisdictions. Uh, so it's not out of control. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we see that weapons are used in offences. Uh, they're used from time to time. But um, it's not a regular occurrence. Well, what's been um, Sergeant's attitude, I guess, when you've seen him in, in the hospital? I mean, you, you know him quite well. Um, is he sort of saying, oh, well, you know, we got away with that one? Or is he, what's his attitude? He's an amazing man. Uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, I can tell you that uh, his first thoughts were that of his dog. Uh, he actually got on the phone and rang back at the scene. He wanted to know about the welfare of his dog because he hadn't had time to check that. And I don't think that any of us had time to think about it either. So his first thoughts were for the welfare of his dog. And I can tell you that he said to me, boss, I'll be back at work as soon as I can. I think it says a lot about the, uh, the man we're talking about. Have any idea roughly how many shots were exchanged there? I mean, you would have looked at the police officer's weapons by now. Have they emptied uh, a hole? I'm not privy to that. Obviously, we have ethical standards down here that the discharge of any weapon by any officer in the course of their duty is always subject to a fairly significant uh, investigation. So we have both a criminal investigation uh, running parallel with an internal investigation, and uh, and those matters really should, should remain with the court. And it, for me to even try and... Uh, 
suggest how many shots were fired would be nothing more than a guesstimate, uh, but obviously there have been multiple shots fired. What do we know about the offenders, or what can you tell us about the offenders? Uh, look, I'm not in a position to discuss the offenders. Are they uh, Islander? Are they, uh, what can you give us in that background? Uh, they're both, they're both uh, Australians, we might just leave it at that. Do you know if um, you talk about, um, uh, we talked about gun crime before, uh, is there an increase in propensity do you think for criminals to use guns in, in crimes or on the case? No, look our experience is we're seeing um, all types of weapons used in, in offences uh, from knives, from clubs, um, syringes, bottles, uh, lumps of wood um, and in fact I'd probably suggest to you we have more of that than we do have firearms. But I'm talking about actual crime and Firing, firing, firing guns in, in crime. Uh, no, and look, obviously we've had a number of uh, offences where weapons have been discharged in the last, in my time here, uh, but they are not a significant number uh, of offences. Sorry. Did uh, have, could I just clarify? Have police had a chance to interview these uh, alleged offenders? Uh, we have spoken. Um, to the offenders early this morning uh, at the casualty section at the Southport Hospital. Um, being mindful, of course, that they too were in need of medical assistance, so uh, that's not always easy. We have to you know, be mindful of the fact that we have the safety of the public uh, uh, at hand. Um, the medical staff have to be allowed to undertake the work that they do, and, uh, and that should take place first, and then uh, when Time permits, uh, we'll get in and do our job as best we can. Are the, are the offenders known to the police? Are you aware of, are already aware of I really can't comment on that. Are they cooperative? I can't comment on that. To, to aim at the legs and feet as well, again, that's a that's the sort of training that they would have to try not to you know, kill the, the offenders. It's, it's very good to have that presence of mind to be aim, aiming there. Yeah, and, and look, again, I, I can't really make comment about what the officers um, how they aimed or what was going through their minds at the time but appreciate the context of where they were uh, a very dark bushland environment uh, we've had an officer shot uh, so you could imagine that there would be a very difficult um, time for the officers in, in determining what they're about to do and how they're about to respond the officer who was with the sergeant at the time yep. um, is he uh, a long time colleague of the sergeant, have they worked together closely? Uh, the officer is an officer, is a senior constable from Runaway Bay. Uh, they would obviously know each other well, uh, they're a close family, and uh, he is an experienced officer as well. Been, he wasn't into have, have there been tears out there today amongst some of the boys and girls? I mean, this is, as you say, a lucky day. Yeah, we, we escaped uh, a very, what could have been a very serious incident today. Um, and what I experienced at the scene was one of resolve amongst the police um, and also I think that everyone thinks about you know, what this job brings with it, the dangers that it brings and the fact that any day you might be confronted with such a situation. So there's a real awareness and these, and these situations drive that home to us. Do you think there'll need to be special counselling for the officers involved, particularly given the similarities to Damien Leading's case that in the armed hold-up, an officer shot chasing offenders? Does that bring up a whole heap of other... Uh, uh, look, as, as a part of any critical incident um, response that we put into place, all officers who need counselling have provided that. Um, different officers obviously react in different ways. But uh, certainly right from the, from the outset, early hours of this morning, uh, our human services officer uh, has been um, at the hospital uh, with Gary and at a later time there'll be some more follow-up for those officers who, who may or may not need that. So he's fully conscious at the moment and, and able to uh, Greg, I haven't spoken to him <coughs> since the early hours this morning, probably about 5.15, and he was very conscious and very awake then. Um, where he is at the moment, I'm not too sure. Do you expect him and the other officer to, to be nominated for bravery awards over this? Or? Uh, that'll certainly be a part of the consideration once all the investigation unfolds, but. I would probably suggest that would be the case. Is it possible to say how many police officers ultimately were at the scene this morning? Um, I'm not in possession of those figures, but I can tell you there was a significant amount of police there, both uniform and plain clothes. Um, the restraint shown by the other police, obviously they realised that a colleague had been shot, there had been a fairly dramatic exchange of gunfire. 
you would expect they've shown some pretty amazing resolve and restraint themselves not to um, take it to another level? Uh, I'm not surprised by that. I mean, we're well trained. Um, the officers had realised uh, certainly that uh, one of the offenders that was captured immediately at the scene uh, was injured and he was restrained. Um, and similarly, I think that the, the second offender, when, when he was captured, uh, a similar approach was taken. I mean, that's our job. Uh, we we uh, don't let our human emotions take, take over. And uh, I think there's a sense of relief that we actually captured them and that no one was injured. Uh, no, no members of the public were injured. And that the officer who was injured, uh, thankfully, uh, is going to come back to work and do his job again. The offender with multiple Yes. Um, and again, I'm not a medico, but uh, the information that I have, he has at least three separate wounds. Um, whether they're as a consequence of one, two or more projectile strikes, I'm not in a position to say. Do you know how long um, after the first offender was captured that the second one was captured? Or? A very short period of time. He only went a short distance. And you tried to get into the house, but then police would have... Uh, look, I don't know about that part of it, sorry. Thanks, everyone. Um, thanks, and thanks for your support. We really appreciate it. It gives a bit of coverage today. Please remember today to be great. And it's a good day, too, because it's also the sentencing of Damien leading mm -hmm. offenders. Uh, we've, you know, we've been very fortunate here today, too. In it could have been a very sad day. In a strange way, is that sort of a cause... Is there any comfort to be given for police that this has had a good outcome as much as the officer's not been killed? Oh, definitely. And the, the other, there was a clo final closure to the other episode. Definitely. Um, each and every time that an, that an officer is confronted with a situation like this, when one, of our, when one of our own is injured in a significant way undertaking their duties, it strikes the heart of every police officer in the state and interstate. Um, we all know the dangers this job brings, and I can tell you, even when we lose an officer from another state, uh, I, we talk about that. It's a part of what we do. And that's what we're here for today. We're going to remember those officers who have lost their lives in the course of their duty, and also today's probably a course for some celebration in that we've uh, been able to dodge what could have been a very, very um, nasty incident.